Hey, how's it going? It's been a while. Good, yeah. It's nice to see your face again. Yeah, it's kind of almost a miracle we can actually do this again, the way our timetables have been, so. Yeah, well, I don't know if that <laughs> that would be a miracle or if that's just God's providential care. No care. That's, that's a good <laughs> point. We, we probably need to address that, don't we? Yeah, no, that's good. But I, I think uh, Happy New Year is in order. It's good to be uh, uh, in yep. 2023 with you. And uh, today we're going to talk about what the Bible says about miracles. And uh, great discussion for us because uh, the Bible's chock full of miracles. Uh, uh, some of the resources I was looking at, uh, you you gave me one and it said uh, um, a guy named Norman Geisler wrote a book called Miracles in the Modern Mind, uh, came out in 1992. And uh, he he indexed uh, the miracles of the Old Testament and it listed 110 of them. And I was um, thinking as I was seeing that and uh, not, I didn't look at his list of 110, but I'm guessing that's not an exhaustive list because at, uh, in the Lutheran study Bible, there's on page uh, 1596, there's a list of the miracles of Jesus and where they show up in the gospels. And it seems like an exhaustive list. There's 36 different miracles accounted there. Um, but at the bottom, it gives a great footnote. It says, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But as I was quickly skimming through some of my resources and looking at indexes, uh, one of the, I think it's uh, uh, the Book of Concord actually brought up a, a miracle of Jesus that isn't on this list. And that's in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, in John 18, verse 6, in the garden, when, when Jesus said, I am he, everybody, all the crowds fell to the ground. And so mm. that that miracle doesn't show up in this list of miracles here. But um, so, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where miracles show up all over the Bibles. And, and I think one of the things one of the big things we'll address today is why don't we see miracles um, in our lives? And, and what does the Bible have to say about that? Yeah, and I think a good place to start is really what is a definition of a miracle? And, yeah. and then also because we and, and in comparison, what is God's providential care, which we do see today, right? We see God's providential care. Just, you know, we, we confess in the first article of the Apostles' Creed that, you know, his creation, and he still cares for his creation out of his goodness and grace and mercy. Um, yeah. So one of the things here, just I'm working off the Lutheran Study Bible on page 1674. For those who have that, this is a great page just to kind of get you acculated to what miracles are and what's God's providence. It says a miracle is when God directly intervenes in nature in such a way that the natural order of things is overruled uh, so if it's not supposed to happen and it happens it's probably a miracle i'm going to put this in very simplistic terms yeah i like that simplicity there that's that's not <laughs> supposed to happen but it did it's that's not, a miracle right. not supposed to happen but you but we also have to contrast that with uh, and we'll deal with the issue if um you know, do miracles still happen today? But we do know God, again, as I mentioned, God's providential care still happens today. And what is God's providence? Um, yet sometimes we see unusual and wonderful things that happen within the natural world or a natural realm. And he gives Dr. Uh, well, the, not Dr. Yeah, I think it was Dr. Geeser gives an example of the time of World War II on D-Day. Yeah. When you have the, the Allies coming towards Normandy, next thing you know, this fog rolls in. And it covers not only it gives them cover, but also covers the Nazis too. Yeah. I mean, the fall covered everybody. But what it did, it allowed shelter or cover from the Nazis shooting down onto the Allied forces coming in. And, and Dr. Giesha said, this is a great example of God's providence. He's working within the natural realm, the natural order, within nat the laws of nature itself. Yeah. But then he gives another example of what can be somewhat confusing. He talks about that in Exodus 14, when, when God has delivered the people out of Israel and they're coming up to the Red Sea, and during that time, he provides them a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But he says, that, and if you look at that at first, it seems to be God is working through the natural order of things. But the very next verse, he says that it brought dark, or it brought light to the Israelites, it brought darkness to Pharaoh and his army. Right. Now that goes beyond something that it appears it's a natural order of things, but now it moves into the the, the understanding of miracle. Yep. That, 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 that's just a quick understanding of, of uh, really kind of look at the two. Because we see God's providence. Again, you see it 
working all around us today. Right. Yeah, no, and I think that's good. I, I um, just for my personal life, then whenever I think about miracles that I might have witnessed, and, and that's one of the things that we'll talk about, because I, I do think miracles still happen, and we'll, we'll get to right. that, um, uh, I'm sure, in our discussion. But the two th- experiences in my life that I had, and I've probably shared this story before, my my car broke down, it was a brand new car, I had 2,000 miles on it, transmission went out, and it limped to a gas station, and I locked my keys in the car, and I turned around, threw my hands up, and all of a sudden, the truck pulls up, and the guy says, "What's going on? Can I help you?" I said, "Nobody can help me. I just locked my keys in the car. You know, I was, you know, just bemoaning my existence at that point." And he said, "I got you." And he hopped out, and he slim jimmed my car. And like within 30 seconds, he was driving away. I didn't even know who he was, or he didn't check my ID or anything. But I'm guessing he was an off-duty sheriff or something like that. But it was. A, it, it seemed like a miracle, but but it was. I mean, that can definitely be seen as God's providential care. God provided somebody. Right through a no, or normal means of, of things. And the other one that comes to mind is I was probably about 11 or 12 years old and we were going through some transitions in my family and my dad was out of work and he had just, uh, he was waiting to receive a new call. And um, I, I remember my parents saying, well, God, God's miraculously provided for us. And as I, I don't think I knew it at the time, but as I grew up and heard more about the story, I realized, well, no, that just a tax return that they had forgotten about finally came in that week they needed it. And, and so it wasn't a out of the nor- natural order of things. It was just, you know, provided at just the right time. And, and so I think a lot of times we attribute miraculous, um, uh, what do you call it, miraculous status to events when, when really a miracle is, is something that can't be naturally explained. We can explain a tax return coming in. Right. Um, the timing was great, but it wasn't necessarily out of the order of how things are supposed to work. And that, that's well said, because I think it does, and you, led, you alluded to it, um, there, is, there is, I think, that's where the confusion lies, where, you, where you, people see God's providential care happening every day in their lives in different aspects, mm-hmm. but then they attribute that to maybe, they'll talk of it as, as, as a miracle itself. Right. And, and so hopefully we can help people, you know, can differentiate between the two as when these things happen in their lives, and, and when truly a miracle does happen, they'll actually be able to recognize it and call it for what it is and praise God for it. Yeah. And I, and I think one of the points just to make along at, while we're sitting with this concept in mind, the differentiation, differentiation between uh, yeah. God's providential care and a miracle is we should ju- be just as thankful for God's providential care as we are yes. for miracles. And I, um, I think that's something to to recognize and to realize the fact that you got daily bread, food on your table, clothes on your body, roof over your head, those are God's work for you that deserve his glory and praise just as much as the um, unexpected cure from cancer or the, you know, whatever miracles we might see in our, our day and age that we, we aren't guaranteed, but God's providential care is a guarantee and, and we shouldn't take it for granted though. That I think that, and that's a temptation as we stop to, we stop realizing, we might stop realizing how much God loves us and shows his care and concern for us through the day in day out stuff that he does for us. Um, but it's, you know, and so I think we get this desire for the supernatural for of um, out of the order of way things are supposed to work, miraculous intervention from God in order to, to want to praise God and, and to think that that will strengthen right. our relationship with God. And, and so I, I think that's something to, to keep in mind is God is constantly at work for us, providing us what we need and, um, chances are there's miracles taking place that we aren't even aware of uh, to allow this continued providential care um, and, and all of it to say is God deserves all of our honor, all of our glory, all of our praise. He's He is the one who's who's concerned for us. And then when you add, <laughs> this is probably, we didn't plan on going here, but I'm going to throw this in here just as Might an as extra. Well. <laughs> yeah. But the idea, you know, that we all have guardian angels, the, you know, the yeah heavenly host that looks that's doing things behind the scenes that we don't see that brings about this providential care and even the miracles right themselves but you know one more thing i like to add though to, to your point that you talked about um you know if someone does believe that a miracle happened in their life mm-hmm. i i would be the last i would want to be the last person to tell them to say now nah, that wasn't a miracle it's just something right. else if someone does believe that a miracle did happen in their life just you know, I don't want. I would never want to take that away from them. And let that person just uh, rejoice in that. Yeah. You know, 
And I think that's one of the things too, I want to think about, because you know, all these things are gifts to us from God. Right. A lot of times. And I'd hate to, and if you've been given this understanding that this was truly a miracle, praise God, cling to it, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, don't think about it too hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, like we and, are right and, now. <laughs> and, and that's a good thing. I, I, I agree with you in that. It's not my job to tell you something, God, to explain yeah. it away. That's not our role, but but at the same time, my caution is always when it comes to miraculous or supernatural things, and and even and, and I'll go kind of a step further in another direction. Even if you feel like God has spoken to you directly, which I would say is a miracle, it's something we're not promised. It's not the way God's ordered things to work. He promised to speak to us through His Word. But if you've heard God's voice, I'm not going to argue somebody against that, other than to say let's place it against Scripture and see if it lines up with God has said clearly in His Word. But but my my fear in situations like that and people talking about them and, and dwelling on them too much is that uh, and this this goes back to when I was on my vicarage I went on a mission trip to Kenya and Pastor Jimmy Coffee who I think is still in Connecticut he was on that trip with us and he was giving a message to uh, the women of the village of Kenya uh, forget what the village name was but uh, he he sa- was talking about miracles and he said a faith based on miracles requires more miracles, but a faith based on Jesus only requires more Jesus. And, and so if if you get um, have a miraculous experience or um, memory, a moment in your life, don't let your faith be built by that. Or you, you can let it be reinforced by that, but don't let that be the center of your faith that to say that I know God loves me because this miracle happened. No, you 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 should know and and know that God loves you because he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross and and he comes to you through his word and sacraments to give you that life. That's that's where your faith needs to live, not on these miracles and 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 I think that's a great uh jumping point. Maybe we can go to some scripture passages where we see Jesus say similar things because um I think that's one of the things we we kind of gloss over in reading scripture is that it just seems like God was just doing miracles, but there's two key places in scripture. I'll, I'll go to real quick okay. that um, where um, Luke 11 verse 16 is, is one uh, to go to. And I had it here somewhere. Where, where's my Bible? I had a tab open with the Bible in it somewhere here. Um, Luke 11 verse 16. I got uh, it. I'll go ahead and read it for us. Thank you. Luke 11, verse 16, while others to test him kept seeking him a sign from heaven, but he knowing their thoughts said to them, every kingdom divided. Do you want to keep going read through that or the context or? Yeah, go just get, get a couple 16. more verses just to. Okay, I'll pick it back up at 17 again. But he knowing your thoughts said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste and a divided household falls. But as Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul, but if I cast out demon by, demons by Beelzebul, by whom do you your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. Yeah, we, we can probably the figure, wrap there. All yeah, because right. yeah, because because really the point is is I I I've, I was actually sitting in Bible study yesterday at a at a friend's church over in Indiana because I took. A, Katie and I went out of town for a, a night and went to church over in Decatur. And uh, the pastor said that, um, and, and it got me thinking, you know, every place we see Jesus encounter a disease or a, a dead person in scripture, you see them raised. And and it kind of got me thinking, and, and I didn't want to argue with him at the time because that was in my purpose of being a Bible study. But, but I don't know if we can say for certain that every sick, diseased, possessed person Jesus saw in his earthly ministry, he healed. We do get the occurrences where it did happen, but but I think this would be a sign that that Jesus wasn't just a walking um, fountain of life, and that, that was the point he was making, and I, and I like the point, you know, that wherever Jesus goes, there is life, but I think it takes faith. It takes faith to receive the benefits that Jesus right. gives, and um, and but so so uh, what what does it say others to test him kept seeking from him a sign from heaven the other place will Matthew twelve verse thirty nine I think this one's a little clearer on this um, and um, I'm googling my Bible verses because it's quicker <laughs> for me though you're going to beat me there but 
But uh, he, he says to the crowds around him, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. And, and so we get this indication in Scripture. And like I said, we, we gloss over this. It gets lost in the glut of miracles that we see in Scripture that Jesus says, nah, no sign's going to be given to you guys. And, and I, I think that's important to realize that God still works the most necessary thing even without miracles. Well, yeah, and it's true. And, and those miracles are always around specific circumstances that, mm -hmm. that Jesus is dealing with, not just in general things that just, like you said, just everybody's just coming by. He's just healing everybody. Those were specific things happening that was going to tell those who were there who saw those miracles, but also for us who read the scriptures, that we learn something else more about Jesus yes. from those miracles. Uh, not just he's just a healer for everybody. But right. and, and I, I think just to add to your point, what you've been going with this is, and I like how you said that, a faith that's built on a miracle needs more miracles. Because what that does eventually, it does, it destroys your assurance. It destroys the foundations for what your faith is already built upon. And that is Christ's word and then what he's in his work, person and work, what he's done for you. Right. You know, and, on the totality of holy scripture not just on specific acts that take place that was either recorded in the bible or in your own personal life because yeah. again because it's faith because if if you go down that rabbit trail and that's what it really is it's a rabbit trail that goes nowhere that it'll actually destroy your you know that it'll destroy your assurance that you have faith and eventually lead to the destruction of your faith yeah which could be very dangerous yeah well what what about this um uh, is is the devil able to do miracles he did it with jesus in the in the uh in the wilderness uh you know that when he was tempted in matthew chapter four he was he took him up to the temple he did all kinds of things of course god allowed him to do that uh, you have in the book of job that satan afflicted job with boils and he yeah. had all kinds of things happen to Job's family that was caused by saint. And so, uh, and he's also, and, and I think it's in second Corinthians that Paul describes him as an angel, you know, as an angel, uh, an angel light, but he, you know, disguised as an angel light. So he's right. there to deceive and he can he do that through miracles. Yes, he could. Yeah. Uh, you see and that with the occult world and, you know, with Ouija boards and all that other stuff that takes place. And, you know, I, I do believe possessions are real. I mean, these are all, in our sense, miracles that are taking place, but it has a different source. Yeah. Other than God. Um, yeah. Matthew 24, verse 24 is a, a good place. Um, the um, it, When Jesus is talking about the days, um, no one knows that day and hour, the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, but it says, Matthew 24, verse 24, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. And so, so I would say this is another evidence to say, where is our faith based? We, we, we want to make sure um, our faith is based on the fact that God gave his son for you. And, and because of that, you can be assured you have a place in God's family. And it's whether or not you receive a miracle, your faith needs to be pointed to Jesus. And, and that's the best probably the best caution we could have when it comes to talking about miracles. And, and again, this is, this is from the Bible. What does the Bible say about miracles here in Matthew 24 verse 24, Jesus says that false Christs, false prophets will do miracles. And so um, to go back to what you were saying is, is that it can, it can lead you astray. And, and I think the devil um, might rejoice to, to say, ha, I got these people trusting in these false miracles or, or, real miraculous things that might even actually help what your earthly existence but it's not uh benefiting your eternal existence with god yeah. and, and, and kind of even put this more contextualize this for for us today and i just i just thought of it but we do see miracles take place mm -hmm. it's just not in the way that we do we see it on a sunday morning when we we bring a child to the waters of holy baptism they are brought out of the kingdom of satan yeah. into the kingdom of light brought from unbelief to faith yeah i mean we see it that we take we eat and drink the lord's body and blood i mean we 
there's those things or when you hear that your someone comes into church and they are actually falling away from the faith and through hearing of the gospel and the sermon they are now brought again back through faith reconverted there's miracles taking place all the time but it, it, it's not flies under our umbrella or our, our definition of what we understand as miracles it's not the type of miracle you see in a marvel comic book you know mm -hmm. where great things are happening all you know it, it's uh it's much more subtle than that yeah right yeah and that and that's that's great to to realize those real things that really keep re recurring and and i think that's harder for us um to realize because i i don't think we engage our brains spiritually as much as we should but when you realize the the condemnation you deserve because of your sin and the uh i mean the free gift I was going to say the free pass. So it's not a free pass of towards licentious sin or, you know, it's not a, a get out of sin free card. It's uh, Jesus died for this card and, and uh, right. he's risen and you're risen too. And you're different now because of Jesus. Um, that's, that's given to you. And that's, that's a miracle um, beyond all miracles that we could search for in this life. And um, I, 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 and I guess kind of maybe just to tie a bow on the, uh, um, the miracles that the devil might be responsible for when they're towards the good. Think about how 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 big of a stick in the eye it would be for Satan if if you know God in his wisdom allowed Satan to do a miracle in your life, you know, even if it's a healing and if it's for the good, if you're like, well, praise the Lord, and you look to the cross even more because of it. I mean, that that's that's how we should take miracles is to be reminded of the greatest miracle that God has allowed his son to take the place of all of humanity, which you want to talk about miracles. This is, uh, this is on par. If, if, if not right up uh, above the, um, the miracle that called creation into existence, that, that God could say, let there be light. And before the sun even existed, there's light um, filling creation and, and God's further words of creation that, that called this world into existence, that, that first miracle. Um, uh, but I, I would say, again, the, the cross where Jesus becomes a substitution for us is, is the greater miracle that, that all miracles, even creation, um, should point us to. And just to, uh, just to keep, he talked about, you know, how we should view miracles that points us to the cross. I think the best way that really helps us to, uh, to form our mindset around how to understand miracles in today and God's providential care in a sense is when you study is to study the actual miracles from the scriptures. And again, I mentioned earlier, it, all those, it always points us back to the cross. It points us even not to the cross, but tells us who God in Christ is, right? We learn more about God, who he is. When we study the miracles in a sense, he's trying to teach us something from those miracles in the context of Holy Scripture, which I think will play out in everyday in, every, in people's everyday lives. Yeah, yeah. Part of the, part of that discipleship. Yeah, definitely, and 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 that's a good place to go. So I I I want to take it to um, uh, maybe maybe a real question people have is if God is capable of miracles, then why isn't He doing this? doing a miracle for me why is he allowing my family member to die why is he allowing me to be afflicted with this progressive disease that's causing me loss of joy of life and uh, pain and suffering why does god not intervene and and take care of this for me what, what do you say to someone who's struggling with that i would go back to scripture and show that how God did do miracles for people first. I would start there, especially with the people of Israel, as he delivered them out from the nation, from Pharaoh's hand and grip. And he performed many miracles for Israel, even bringing them into the promised land, destroying their enemies all around them with miraculous events and things that he did. But the people still turned away from him. And I would say inverse of that says sometimes, uh, you know, God could do a miracle for that person, but is that a guarantee that, that person now is going to say, thank you, Lord, I'm going to believe in you forever. We know right. that from history, from scripture, that that's not the case. Matter of fact, many times we know from scripture and that sometimes, like in Hebrews chapter 12, and why does he allow a child of God to suffer? Because through our suffering, 
we will now see the suffering for what our Lord did at the cross. Right. And sometimes that'll have more of an effect on an individual than performing a miracle for them. Because ultimately it is bringing that person to the cross and, and to share in that blessed resurrection that, that Christ has won for all who believe in him. Because that's where yeah. the that's where the ultimate miracle lies. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I love that. That's a that's a great way to to talk about it. Cause I, I think that and what one one way to add to that, because because I think that's a great place to see it is, but um I was just talking to with a friend today I was visiting and uh, he was talking about, you know, asking God, why is this happening to me? And, and I said, you know, well, maybe it's helping you talk to God more. Um, yeah. Keeping that conversation line open of, of Lord, what's going on. And uh, another way to say that is it deepens your reliance on God. It makes you further aware of your, your limitations and, and your need for more than just what this life might be. Uh, promise or or lack um god's god's got a better um thing in store for you i i told you before we started um one other note from the bible study i was at yesterday morning is uh, my friend james borman uh, some of you might remember him but um james was talking about pastor carr who was a senior pastor here at trinity his last week of life james was able to visit with him a number of times and pastor carr told james he said uh um he said you know, I'm I'm praying for a miracle, and I know either way this goes, I'm going to get one. And uh, mm. I, I just thought that's a beautiful picture of of what God has in store for us is a miracle. It's it's again, it's that cross substitution of Jesus for you. He's taking your place, so you can have the joys of paradise. And um, whether or not He takes the cancer away that's killing you, or gives you eternal life where death can never touch you again, um, He's got a miracle in store for you. And um, we fix our eyes on that prize and know that we have the one thing that is needful. Um, and uh, I, I just pulled up that hymn, one thing's needful, Lord, this treasure, teach me highly to regard. All else, though it first give pleasure, is a yoke that presses hard. Beneath it, the heart is still fretting and striving. No true lasting happiness ever deriving. This one thing is needful. All others are um it breaks the page there i don't get the rest of the verse here <laughs> i'll pull it up yeah but but that one thing that's needful is christ and, and so we have that i i mean i feel like we just keep talking about the cross when we're talking about miracles but uh maybe that's appropriate well it uh it's what you just said though all those things no matter what happens in our life we have a miracle that's in our possession right now just waiting to be consummated right and, and that the, i mean just that in of itself not only just with our old resurrected bodies a new heavens and a new earth no more pain no more tears no more sorrow no more wars or rumors of wars plagues troubles tornadoes earthquakes or earth, i mean hurricanes you cross the board i mean there's a miracle that's going to happen when christ returns that that it's really the big picture why what why Jesus did what why God in Christ did what he did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the uh yeah, the the rest of that first stanza. This one thing is needful, all others are vain. I count all but loss that I Christ may obtain. And um, so yeah, I'll I'll stop hemming out on us here. But, <laughs> but yeah, so um so let's I, I had a brief brief time of preparation today, but I came across something that I think might be helpful for this conversation. Um, uh, there's this uh, Christian Dogmatics by T.J. Mueller, um, which is a repristination of a three-volume set called uh, Fran by Francis Pieper called uh, commonly referred to as Pieper's Dogmatics. But he talks about um, a story that I probably had heard at some point and forgotten, but about how when Luther was alive in 19 or 1540, um, Martin Luther's friend Philip Melanchthon um, was on his deathbed and he was fallen ill. And um, the accounts of it are, as history often um, allows, you know, kind of varied. Some said that he was actually dead, some that he was so near death he wasn't coming back. Whatever it was, he was gravely ill and all hope was lost. But uh, Luther went and prayed at his bedside. And he recovered, 
And um, so um, Pieper and Mueller, they uh, refer to it as a fides, fides heroica, um, that is heroic mm -hmm. faith, this prayer of heroic faith. And, um, and so there's kind of some, I was just reading an article about it. I'm going to share the article because it's actually very, uh, as far as theological journals go, this article is very readable um, and uh, kind of helpful. And it talks about, you know, the question of was this miracle because of Martin Luther's faith or, or, or are we as biblical Christians or I would say Lutherans supposed to pray in a way that we evoke God's response and um, it actually compared it to when uh, Luther's daughter died. I think Magdalena uh, died. I think she was like seven or eight years old. But And uh, Luther prayed at that time, too. And uh, so kind of the underlying point is, is that the strength of a person's faith isn't going to allow or invoke or, or cause God to do a miracle. And, and I think that's something that that we should be clear on as Christians is that if God's not giving you healing, it's not because you don't believe enough or believe hard enough. But um, the the example of uh, Luther's prayer that's given in the Melanchthon scenario is great because they say, you know, Luther wasn't praying as as if to control God, which I think is sometimes how we talk about um, things when we we get into miracles. Is that I I have a strong enough faith, so God has to do this for me. Or God isn't doing this for me because I don't have strong enough faith, so I got to believe harder. But but that prayer that Luther prayed, it, it says that he was rubbing God's promises on his ears. And so what he was con continually doing is he is going to Scripture and he's saying, God, these are your promises. These are your promises. Um, and um, kind of a further conclusion is, God, you don't have to do this, but I know you're capable of it. And I think that's a great way to approach God is in that faith that looks to him for the daily providence, the daily uh, bread that we have, just the mundane things that support this body and life, um, we know God is capable of those, and we know God's capable of more, and whatever he gives us, we're going to be grateful for, grateful to God for, um, and take what we have from God as, as what we need for this day in life. Yeah, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. It's... Uh... And that's what we trust. Yeah, and that and that's a great pair of prayer of faith to to know that God is in control and His will is good and holy and and perfect for us. And and you might say, well, this suffering I'm going through doesn't feel very holy right now. You know, my my life, which doesn't feel a lot of purpose right now, doesn't feel very holy and good. Um, but God is is working through those things, things he, we can't even understand or or number. Um, some of them we can, you know, the blessing of being together with family or or bringing a, a benefit to to those in your life still. But some of it's just as hard to to swallow as saying, look, you're still alive. You're still breathing. You're still able to pray for those people in your life. And um, that's that's a godly thing that God is still uh, allowing your existence for. Um, another alternative, I, I'm just thinking of people who are facing the end of their life. And they're like, well, why is God allowing me to go on? Well. Well, you are a conduit by which the people in your life are able to express God's love to you. And, right. and to be a recipient of that love of others is, is a blessing to, to have your neighbors that care for you and your, your family members that care for you. You're giving them a place to do the works that God has prepared for you. And it, I mean, it, it might seem silly to be like, well, it feels like God's just using me. But, but that's the way creation works is, is it's not the perfection God intended, but within this imperfect creation now broken because of sin god is allowing people to to draw close to him to to be with him to do his work and, and to see his his care uh through their hands at times um to know that we we exist for for him to love and he, and he does love us and that's always been one of the positions you talk about someone who's you know i wish you know why is the lord allowing me to keep living you know this is it's the same view we always understood about the church has always understood about uh, people with handicaps, you know, who had to be taken care of their whole life by caregivers. And you, and you always, you know, some people would ask them, well, why? Well, well, because that person who is handicapped is truly being a blessing to the caregivers. Yeah. Again, allowing them to share that love to neighbor that Christ calls us to do. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and in some sense, it's, it, I, I dare to call it a miracle, but they are 
that blessings can be, I don't know if I want to call it a miracle, I don't know what do you think about that, but blessings in many ways are just at the same level of a miracle because they give you something we know through those blessings or just like miracles, we're learning something about God and his gracious mercy and care that we wouldn't have known about unless he would have gave them to us, whether that might, you know, whatever that, whatever that is, the yeah, circumstances absolutely. in life. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good, I never, I never thought about that as, as a miracle. I don't know if I'd say it's a miracle, but it's definitely an opportunity where, where God yeah, is working I, something we would not have worked on our own or in a way we would not right. work on our own. Yeah. As I was thinking through it, talking out loud here in front of everybody, but I, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> yes. I wouldn't call it a miracle either. Right. But I think it's at the, it's, it's at the same level of a miracle. I'm not judging you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. yeah it's, it's, it's God's work. That's beyond our ability to, to comprehend yeah. and and that's that and that's exactly what a miracle is is it's god working in ways that we can't that the world can't and um so yeah what what else you got there i think we've covered a lot of ground um you got any favorite yeah. miracles in the bible favorite miracles i know one of the ones that always um uh, i i my favorite miracle i think it is is the play of the nile turning into blood mm. And I do, and that's one of those where I'm 50-50, you ask me on a particular day, I lean towards it, I always lean towards it being literal blood. But I yeah. can also see where it can be God working through a natural order of things, turning that Nile red through whatever, and it's still a miracle because yeah. it's, it's, it's happening in pots and it's happening in right. bowls of water. I mean, it's everywhere and it happens just like this uh that, that's just one of those things that rabbit trails like go down because of you know is it god's providence we have miracle um we have providence that are actually a miracle because it you know it i don't know it's just that's one of my favorite ones because it's uh i don't know that's it's, it's always intrigued me what about you yeah i'm i'm actually um the one the recently that i i really love is the uh the miracle of the interrupted miracle where Jesus is on his way to heal Jairus, his daughter. And then the woman touches the hem of his garment. And there's, oh, yeah. there's just yeah. so many things about that, that are just, it's, it's a beautiful story about how um, this woman's faith that if she just touches him, she'll be healed. And, and she does. And, and there's just like so much built into that story of this woman had been bleeding for 12 years old. And um, it's coincidental who knows uh, you know, that, the the girl the daughter of Jairus is twelve years old and so you know this is just a a story loaded with so much things and and the fact that uh, Jesus did this healing and I I think this was early on in his ministry because he strictly charged them and he only took um, Peter James and John to to the room where he did the miracle and and so it was like this early on in Jesus' ministry he raised some uh, a, a girl back to life and. Uh, just just think of the dra drama of it. And perhaps what's brought that to mind for me lately is um, the series The Chosen. I, I, I know I've talked about that before, but without <laughs> that miracle was just um, portrayed in the last couple episodes of season three. And if you haven't watched that series, I, I, I don't have a lot of um, questions about it. I, I, I think it does a great job of telling what happened in scripture obviously they're doing some historical fiction stuff they're building up some lives of the disciples around it and some storylines that aren't in the bible but but the main story is is from scripture and it's just a great way to image what it must have been like for them and and just kind of the way they they built up that that story of that woman and and the daughter and the family scene there is very very moving and um that that the chosen series is is well worth your your time if you're watching tv and you're obviously watching things right now if you're hearing this but you know i also have to admit i also have a i have another miracle too it's probably a close second but sometimes it'll tie my tie with the uh now turning the blood and that's the star that would uh, that rose and the magi followed mm. there's another great example too of did god create a specific star out of nowhere or did he use natural order of the things as yeah. a supernova that you know that happened and god guided and direct that whole process i don't know you know it's just one of those intriguing things that yeah. uh, that i like to go down and 
get lost in from time to time. But that's another one of mine too that I, especially coming out of Christmas, that I think about a lot. Yeah, no, that that's good. And I like how yours are are more uh, nature related miracles. And I was yeah. gonna say my, my my second one, if if you were wanted to know, would be the I, I should I think it's Mark eight or Mark nine when uh, Jesus heals the uh, the or heals the demon possessed boy. And the father uh, says, if you are able, will you heal my son? And and Jesus says, all things are possible for one believe one who believes. And then the father says, I believe, help my unbelief. And yeah. just that cry of faith right there in the midst of that miracle is a great, great prayer every day for a Christian, I think, is I believe, help my unbelief. Uh, because we have those doubts. We have those those moments, those times when we turn away from the cross, from knowing that God has given us everything necessary um, to, to start to think um, that we can do it without God or God might be leaving us on our own, but to ask him, help my unbelief. And, and there right. he stands ready to do for us what we need. Well, I would say that God, this providential care has guided us through this discussion today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so it was not a miracle of our calendars to align. I think we uh, I think it was the week of Christmas last time we recorded, and then we thought we'd be back the uh, after two weeks. But um, between uh, pastors uh, meeting on Monday, that happens once a yeah. month, and uh, and then uh, last week was Martin Luther King Day, and I was redoing my bathroom, so those things collided <laughs> to uh, prevent us from getting together. But it's good to be back in this, and um, yeah. we we'll hope this uh, discussion was helpful for you. If you if you have any questions about what the bible says about something let us know we'll we'll uh, come up with a topic for next time and look forward to sharing it with you yes please come up with some topics we could always use some so yep. yeah yeah we we don't always seek out the hard questions but we we like to try to answer them <laughs> yes definitely so all righty all right well we'll see you when we see you and pray god's blessings upon you yep blessings to you too yep. bye-bye